a while back, Amazon announced that they had Luna, which is their version of cloud gaming, where you are playing games, but you are actually playing, instead of on a, a box in your house, you are playing games on a box in their house. And they will then stream you the video of you playing. Um, this makes a whole lot of sense because Amazon, like Google, sends ridiculous amounts of video streams every single day. And they are very, very good at sending video streams uh, to people. So, of course, it makes sense for them to try and do this. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the name Amazon Luna. They should have gone with something around Twitch as a name. I do I do like that they went with their, their purple since Twitch is purple, they, they should have just called it Twitch Cloud or something like that. Um, but I signed up the day that it was announced, and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting because it's currently in early access. So not everybody has uh, the ability to actually try it. Well, a few days ago, I got my email that says, you're in. And I was like, yes, uh, I want to try it out. And so uh, I, I messed with it a little bit just to see if it worked, I was using my Xbox controller and it worked pretty well. Uh, but I ended up buying the Amazon controller. Now, I just got done messing around with it for a little bit. And I have to say that I feel like this is a pretty good controller. It feels really good in the hand. I don't know if YouTube's compression is going to ruin this. But if you look at the back of the controller, let's see if I can get the lighting on there. There we go. If you look at the back of the controller, you can see all these little dots. Those little dots uh, give like, like this texture, and I really like the way it feels. It's really good. Those dots are not on the front. They're only on the back, and it feels really nice. Uh, it's got some. Uh, it's got the hamburger icon, which is kind of like uh, the Stadia controller has a hamburger icon too, but then it has like the three dots, uh, whereas the Luna controller has a hamburger icon and then a circle icon. I think it's a circle. It just looks like a circle. It of course has the Luna button and then a microphone button for, Oh, I'm sorry if I set off your devices, if you have those devices at your house. Um, I tried using the a button, which that's what I'll call it. I tried using that. It didn't do anything. I couldn't get it to do anything at all. Um, the pairing, process was incredibly easy. I just grabbed my phone. I used a QR code in this little pamphlet that came with it. Uh, it. It installed the app on my phone. And then I connected my controller to the Wi-Fi and I was all done. It just paired. Now I have played it on my computer and I've played it on my iPad and I figured I would show off what does that look like for each of them really quickly. Uh, so on my computer here, I have my Amazon Luna. It's a program. It's not just a web browser. It's a program. Uh, so if I if I double click on that, it, you know, it says wait a minute, and then it shows the little Amazon logo. And I'm going to turn on my Luna controller. It vibrates. That feels like a pretty hefty vibrate there just then. Uh, it's now on, and it should just be working. Like it should just connect. Yeah. So now you got a ring around there. That means it's connected or it's connecting. And then when you the ring is just on the top, then you're all set. And as you can see right here on my screen, it says my controller is ready for gameplay. So I'm going to uh, start up a game. I played, I, I was messing around with each one of these. Um, so let's see what other games we have for options here. Uh, newly added to Luna. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna start, start up Rainbow Six. And let's go to my library. We'll look at my library and see what I have here. I do like the way that you can sort things. Uh, Google, pay attention to this. Being able to sort things is uh, very, very huge. So let's say that I wanted to find a, we'll say, I don't know, an RPG. What do we got for RPGs? All right, we've got CrossCode, Shantae, uh, The Surge 2, uh, and then if I click on here, I can go back up to shooters. And I'm going to jump in with control just because I know that it looks pretty good. Uh, and I hit play now just so that you know, you cannot control this app 
with the controller. It just won't do anything. Uh, I don't understand why that is. It's kind of weird, but that's okay. Every time I start it up, it says network detected or network issues detected. Then that goes away, and then there hasn't been any issues. I'll say I'm noticing zero latency, just like Google Stadia. It's pretty clear to me that game streaming latency really is not that big of an issue, at least for me. You know, if you've got a fast internet network like I do, then, you, then you're all set. Um, not everybody has that, and I understand that. And that's why cloud gaming isn't for everybody yet. That yet is a really, really important thing. Uh, because I think in 10 years, you're not going to be buying a box to go under your TV. Um, I think everybody will be on the cloud. Uh, let's get started with the game. I'm going to continue where I left off. I have not played Control, um, and I'm not actually playing it right now. So I'm just going to move move around a little bit so you can see. We'll do a couple of jumps so you can see uh, how things look. So this is this is on Amazon Luna. Did I raise you there for a moment? Not seeing a whole lot of artifacting. Although tendencies that I when I whenever I see artifacting either on GeForce Now or Google Stadia, uh, it always seems to be when I'm in like the dark. So we go into this room. I'm not seeing much artifacting at all. Um, artifacting tends to happen when I play Google Stadia at the very beginning, and then it kind of smooths itself out. Uh, same with GeForce Now. I'm not seeing artifacting here at all. Looks pretty good. What do we got here? Can I pick that up? I can't pick that up. I want to I find something. That, oh, okay. Here we go. So I'm going to I'm going to interact with that. Now if you look down in the bottom, you see it's showing me the Xbox prompts. So it's it's detecting that this is like an Xbox controller. The problem being, I'll switch this over so you guys can see. The problem being if you look at the the buttons on here, there's the hamburger icon and the circle icon. There is no button that looks like what I just saw. That will be very frustrating to some people. Like, what if you are coming from a PlayStation and on the screen it shows you this weird button thing and you look at your controller and that button prompt is not there? Like, that's going to be an issue. Uh, so that's definitely something that they have to work out. And that comes from this just being a Windows port. This is not a game that was made for Luna. You know, when you talk about Google Stadia, Google Stadia doesn't have that problem because the games are made for Stadia, and so they have these specific button prompts on there. And I think that that's an important thing. All right, let's do a quick latency test. So I'll, I'll hold up my controller here. I'm going to jump. And it seems to work okay. Uh, I'm going to quit the game. And I'm, we'll switch over to Sonic the Hedgehog. And um, excellent, no issues. We'll go to library. We'll go to home because Sonic will be at the top, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is something that, that Stadia needs to do. They need to make navigating your library better. Uh, but I'm going to hit play now. And it's going to go ahead and, and get started up. My controller just vibrated. Sega. There's that Sega. I love that sound. Network issue detected and then it disappears. I wish that they wouldn't show that to me unless there actually are issues. Maybe have it set up so that it doesn't show in the first, I don't know, 15 seconds of gameplay or something. And I'm not going to play. I'm just going to... Uh, Mania mode. I'm just going to show you some jumps. All right, there we go. Here we go. So, no latency there. And I have to say, the, the controller feels pretty good. Um, let's talk about the buttons for a second. And I'm going to go home and oop, 
I want to close the, the game real quick. Yes, exit the game. I want to talk about the controller for a couple of minutes. Not a couple of minutes, a couple of moments. Um, the buttons. They feel like they're somewhere between a Stadia face button and a an Xbox face button. Xbox face buttons, at least the Xbox One controllers, not the series. I haven't messed with those yet. Their buttons feel more rounded. Um, the Stadia controller buttons feel very flat comparatively. Not as flat as a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, but very flat comparatively. These feel like they are more rounded than Stadia and Nintendo Switch, but less rounded than the Xbox uh, One controllers. The D-pad of this, to me, is a little mushy, but it's really not that bad. The, con the control sticks feel really good. There's very little travel for the uh, for the triggers. The triggers have very little travel. You compare that to, say, a Stadia controller, lots of travel there, whereas this has very, very little travel. I'm not sure uh, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, everything feels really good, though. The D-pad just feels a little bit mushy. Everything else feels great. Now, one of the cool things about the Amazon Luna controller is that I can be playing over uh, on my computer. So I'll, I'll bring that up on screen again. I can be playing on my computer and then I can switch to another device without having to repair the controller. So I'm gonna grab my iPad here for a second. And let me close this. All right. So I have right here an Amazon Luna button. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to start the game up, which I guess I should have left it running before, uh, but I'll get the game started and then I'm going to switch over to my iPad so that you can see how that works. But it, it works great. Uh, I tried it earlier. All right, so we're in the Green Hills zone. I'm going to put this right over here and I'll switch the screen so you guys can see this and I'm just going to hit the Luna button. And then it's going to ask me who's playing. And I'm going to be like, I'm playing. And then it's going to say, well, you're already playing on another device. You want to play on this one? So I hit yes. And then it closes on my on my computer screen. It closed. So it just closed. I didn't close that. And now it says, please reconnect the controller. So I just hit a button on my controller. And I can keep playing. And that's really cool. Uh, that's kind of a I, I don't I don't want to say it's a big difference, but it is a difference between having to um, you know put in that four four button code. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to switch over to this screen instead. All I do is start it up and then it's like, all right, hit a button and you're playing. Uh, that's really cool. Is it a big deal to have to put in like a four button combination? No, that's what you have to do on Stadia. You got to put in like a four button combination, but this is, that is more seamless. And I like that a lot. Anyway, that's my first experience with Amazon Luna. What are your thoughts? Uh, not necessarily about the business model. I have a lot of thoughts about the business model. I'm not a fan of the business model, and we will talk about that at some other, some other point in time. But just the overall experience of using it feels really good, and I am impressed. So uh, let me know what you all think uh, down below. Are you going to sign up when you get early access, and are you going to buy the Amazon Luna controller? All right? Thanks for watching. I will see you all next time. Until then, bye-bye.